Sound of Freedom actor Jim Caviezel recently did a sit-down interview with Dr. Jordan B. Peterson where he explained how playing Tim Ballard in the movie changed him as a person. Uh, he was asked by Peterson, how has this changed you? How was experiencing that material and having to play it out changed changed, uh, changed you? Uh, Caviezel responded, I give my life in a heartbeat. Changed me. I'm less concerned about myself. I will tell you this right now. I would absolutely die. If this were to change the world and get rid of trafficking and pornography and all of the eight arms of this octopus that has to be destroyed, the only way you can destroy it is to take the head out. If that hits, I'd give my life for it in a heartbeat. So pretty profound how taking on the role of Tim Ballard changed Jim Caviezel. He has become a uh, person who is less concerned with himself and sounds like he's willing to do a lot of self-sacrifice in order to defeat these great evils. Sounds like he's taking on the disposition of many, many of the saints who uh, took on similar dispositions and they actually did pay with their lives uh, for standing up for what is right and just and refused, refused to cower or back down in the face of evil, even when they were faced with death. Very admirable, admirable comments here from Jim Caviezel. But what I also found really interesting is earlier in the interview, he was also asked how he prepared for the role and uh, the subject matter it entailed, mainly confronting the great evil that is human trafficking. He said, my job is to give what I know to be absolutely certain and real. I hooked into Tim as a childlike quality to him, and I say, uh, stay with that innocence and don't take that innocence as weakness. So when I read the scripture, I feel truth, good, evil. And I find the good and let that just pierce the darkness. And it has to pierce. And I know what that light and I know that deception that when I start hearing about, for example, in your life, there's two masters here. One is from the evil wickedness side, but it comes through your ego. And the other one is the light side that tells you Uh, what you might not want to hear, but you ought to hear. And it's not manipulative. It's truth. So I go to that side. Then I pray that I go through it, like going through um, the experience. He elaborates saying, like the passion of the Christ, I looked at the Shroud of Turin and there were were two men, Christian Tinsley and Keith Evangeline, who were experts in makeup. Both of these men were agnostic and they looked at the Shroud that Mel Gibson presented to them. However, they were able to show it You can see the track lines of Jesus. You can see the actual bamboo sticks that they used to initially hit him. And then you see the cat of nine tails, the track lines. They look like the Grand Canyon in your skin and it shocked them. Now these guys look at everything from decapitations, murders, and everything. Prior to this, I did a movie long ago in New York and I was with Homicide and I got to see the contortion of a face when someone gets murdered and it's hard to watch. But when you start going into this, which is children, there's something that I can't even fathom even with the protection of Almighty God, because it took me two years to get over this. Remember, this was filmed uh, like back in 20, 2018, 2019. And it just came out now because it was put on ice by the Walt Disney Company uh, for five years after they acquired Fox. Uh, we don't understand why they didn't uh, release it uh, and why they just kind of put it on ice. Who knows? Because they released a bunch of other bad films they acquired from Fox that were box office bombs. Um, there was like some Kristen Stewart like, like, underwater alien movie that did terribly. A friend of mine, Debbie came into the room and at around three o'clock in the middle of the night, I was in a chair and she heard me just weeping. Now I would go into these black holes and I have no idea. I don't remember it, but this was all the screaming that I had to hear. I didn't want to hear it, but I had to hear it. And then I was able to transform that into the movie that you saw that you just saw when I asked Alejandro Monteverdi, that's the director of the film uh, to move the camera uh, to our director of Uh, photography to take it and show him my eyeball so you'd see a 20-foot eye to see what Tim goes through to rip his heart out. Now, it's not like this is what I want to experience any more than I want to get on a cross and have my heart broken. I went through hypothermia. I had to have open heart surgery. I was electrocuted, struck by lightning. I understand the necessity of what I was going to have to go through and could help bring people back to God to wake them up. And quite frankly, more people now, Jordan, are more afraid of the devil than they are of God because they want a happy Jesus. The problem is, Jordan, we all are going to die. Eventually, that that is going to happen. But the power of the devil deceives to say, no, no, you're going to be around for a long, long time. And they never wake up. And eventually there's a judgment. Then you have to decide or God decides not how you want to see yourself anymore, but how God sees you and how God sees you is who you really are. That's true. So that's how I chose to go at this particular case. 
I had no choice but to go in. And I hear the screams in my heart. I hear the scream uh, because the agents that I got to work with got to show me things. And one particular time he says, are you sure you want to go further? But I was weeping so hard. I said, this is what Tim goes through. This is what I got. I got to see it in order to get to, I got to see it in order to get into there, to take people to a level of, will you do something? Will you do something? At some point it ends for all of us. So the pain in my heart is much better than the pain in the future. And I have to, and if I have to say, have to see that to save my children, to motivate me, to save my niece, to tell my sister, no, walking home at 13 years old from school is not a good choice, not a good choice. My sister says to me, I want my daughter to have the same kind of experience I have. And I said, no, not until this changes. You need to understand. And my sister is a good, great mother, but she wasn't aware because the media, because the media that's supposed to do a good job to tell the truth. Well, they're going into that direction, which is let's kind of twist it and change it and not talk about it. So I found that I found that really intriguing. And uh, the first time I listened to it, I, I had a hard time understanding what Jim was trying to convey there. But when I was actually transcribing this for this article, uh, I, I figured it out a lot more. He was literally taking on the pain that Tim Ballard is witnessing in this stuff, the pain that these kids are suffering he was, he was empathizing with that so much so that he could bring that to the screen to share that with other people to let them know about how awful, dangerous, terrible, sinister, and evil this child trafficking is. But he also does it to show, to show that, hey, there might be this great evil out there, but there's something far greater than that. And that, and that, and that's God's light. That's, and that's, and that's God, right? That's Jesus Christ. Um, and he wants to touch people in that way too, that even though there is this like great evil, it can still be overcome and, and, and it can be overcome by human action, uh, in, in a very, very different ways. Obviously he's not trying to tell you what kind of action that needs to be. He just wants you to take action. I mean, that's the whole point of this, uh, questioning right here. Will you do something? He doesn't say what you need to do. He just wants to inspire you to do something. He wants to take on kind of this, the sacrifice almost to bring the, like the sac, bringing the like good out of evil, the the evil of this child trafficking, turning, turning that into a movie and bringing good out of it by raising, raising awareness about it, spreading it to millions of people about what's really happening that could end up uh, people praying that affects how things happen. You get people donating things. You get people volunteering. There's all kinds of ways that this awareness can affect how people start taking action to put a stop to this happening. We might even see politicians start enacting laws, start empowering law enforcement to really go after a lot of this stuff. Um, the, lim- the There is no limit on w- the impact that this film can have. And I think that... Uh, that is really kind of maybe what Jim is is getting out of getting out of it at least a little bit, and that's kind of a little bit of what I took out of what he said, and how he approaches his roles. And I just I found that um, really powerful and really moving. And uh, I know he can kind of maybe seem like he's meandering a little bit, but he has like this this conviction, and and when he does make these like very lucent points, they really hit home, uh, hit at your core. Uh, and this is the one that really kind of stood out to me. Uh, more people now, Jordan, are more afraid of the devil than they are of God because they want a happy Jesus. And I think that is 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 definitely something that is affecting our society and really like stands out. Um, and I think that uh, God expects more of us, and He expects us to put a stop to this great evil. And uh, we need to we need to live up to those expectations that God has for us, and and really put a stop to this. And I think that's what Caviezel is talking about here. That's why he wants this. That's why he took on this role. That's why he went through this mental suffering that he's uh, telling us that he went through to bring this film um, to us, so that we we can do something about it.